another reaction video and we got Larry Bird the forgotten NBA GOAT let's get straight into the video y'all let's get it let's get it let's get it all legends few tales rival the audacity of Larry Bird's greatness picture this a game where Larry Bird the hick from French Lick decided to showcase his unmatched skill by playing almost entirely left-handed. But that's not all. In a feat that defied belief, Bird not only dominated the court with his non-dominant hand, but also achieved the elusive triple-double. This moment, etched in the annals of basketball history, is just a glimpse into the extraordinary prowess of Larry Bird, known to many as Larry Legend. But was Bird truly as good as the legends suggest? Born in West Baden Springs, Indiana, Larry Bird's journey to basketball greatness was anything but ordinary. From his humble beginnings to his meteoric rise in the NBA, Bird's story is one of perseverance, determination, and unparalleled skill. Growing up in French Lick, Indiana, Bird faced adversity from a young age, but it was on the basketball court where he found solace and sanctuary. Bird was born in West Baden Springs, Indiana, to Georgia and Claude Joseph Joe Bird, a veteran of the Korean War. Bird's parents were of Irish, Scottish, and some Native American descent. He has four brothers and a sister. He was raised in nearby French Lick, where his mother worked two jobs to support Larry and his five siblings. Bird has said that being poor as a child still motivates him to this day. Georgia and Joe divorced when Larry was in high school, and Joe died by suicide about a year later. Larry used basketball as an escape from his family troubles, starring for Springs Valley High School and averaging 31 points, 21 rebounds, and four assists as a senior on his way to becoming the school's all-time scoring leader. According to Bird, he grew up as a huge fan of the Indiana Pacers in the American Basketball Association, ABA, and the 619 center Mel Daniels, who represented his first exposure to professional basketball. Bird's youngest brother, Eddie Bird, also played basketball at Indiana State University, where Daniels would coincidentally become an assistant coach to the young Larry once he played there. After a brief stint, at Indiana University. Bird found his home at Indiana State University where he captured the nation's attention with his remarkable talent. Bird received a scholarship to play college basketball for the Indiana Hoosiers under head coach Bob Knight in 1974. After less than a month on the Indiana University campus, he dropped out of school. Finding the adjustment between his small hometown and the large student population of Bloomington to be overwhelming, he returned to French Lick, enrolling at Northwood Institute, now North Northwood University in nearby West Baden and working municipal jobs for a year before enrolling at Indiana State University in Terre Haute in 1975. He had a successful three-year career with the Sycamores, helping them reach the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history with a 33 NATO record where they played the 1979 championship game against Michigan State. Indiana State lost the game 75 to 64 with Bird scoring 19 points but making only 7 of 21 shots. The game achieved the highest ever television rating for a college basketball game, in large part because of the matchup between Bird and Spartans point guard Irvin Magic Johnson, a rivalry that lasted throughout their professional careers. Despite failing to win the championship, Bird earned numerous year-end awards and honors for his outstanding play, including the Naismith College Player of the Year Award. For his college career, he averaged 30.3 points, 13.3 rebounds, and 4.6 assists per game, leading the Sycamores to an 81-13 record during his tenure. Bird also appeared in one game for the baseball team, going one for two with two RBI. He graduated in 1979 with a Bachelor of Science degree in physical education, transitioned to Larry Bird's NBA career with the Boston Celtics. But it was in the hallowed halls of the NBA where Larry Bird truly became a legend. A 12-time NBA All-Star, Bird's impact on the game was undeniable. Bird was selected by the Boston Celtics with the sixth overall pick in the 1978 NBA Draft. He did not sign with the Celtics immediately. Instead, he played out his final season at Indiana State and led the Sycamores to the NCAA title game. Celtics general manager Red Auerbach publicly stated that he would not pay Bird more than any Celtic on the current roster but Bird's agent Bob Wolf told Auerbach that Bird would reject any sub-market offers and simply enter the 1979 draft instead, where Boston's rights would expire when the draft began on June 25th and Bird would have been the likely top pick. 
After protracted negotiations, Bird inked a five-year, $3.25 million contract with the team on June 8th, making him the highest-paid rookie in sports history. Shortly afterwards, NBA draft eligibility rules were changed to prevent teams from drafting players before they were ready to sign, a rule known as the Bird Collegiate Rule. In his rookie season, 1979-80, Bird immediately transformed the Celtics into a title contender. The team improved its win total by 32 games from the year before he was drafted and finished first in the Eastern Conference. With Averages of 21.3 points, 10.4 rebounds, 4.5 assists, and 1.7 steals per game for the season, he was selected to the All-Star team and named Rookie of the Year before the 1980-81 season. The Celtics selected forward Kevin McHale in the draft and acquired center Robert Parage from the Golden State Warriors, forming a Hall of Fame trio for years to come. Behind Bird's leadership and Boston's upgraded roster, the Celtics again advanced to the conference finals for a rematch with the 76ers. Boston fell behind 3-1 to start the series, but won the next three games to advance to the finals against the Houston Rockets, winning in six games and earning Bird his first championship. Bird was named MVP of the 1983-84 season with averages of 24.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists and 1.8 steals per game. In the playoffs, the Celtics avenged their loss from the year before to the Bucks, winning in five games in the conference finals to advance to the finals against the Los Angeles Lakers. Bird was named finals MVP behind 27.4 points, 14 rebounds, and 3.6 assists per game, with averages of 25.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 6.8 assists and two steals per game, Bird became just the third player in NBA history to win three consecutive MVP awards. In the playoffs, the Celtics lost only one game through the first three rounds en route to a matchup against the Rockets in the finals. In game six of the final series, Bird recorded a triple-double of 29 points, 11 rebounds and 12 assists as the Celtics won. The final series four games to two against the Rockets. In the middle of his amazing career, in a legendary display of skill and gamesmanship, Larry Bird once even stunned the basketball world by playing an entire game predominantly with his left hand, despite being right-handed just to prove he is the greatest. During a matchup against the Portland Trail Blazers on February 14, 1986, Bird decided to save his dominant right hand for the next opponent and opted to shoot left-handed instead. The result? A jaw-dropping performance where Bird showcased his remarkable ambidexterity, tallying an impressive stat line of 47 points, 14 rebounds, and 11 assists in 49 minutes of play. Even more astonishing, Bird took 10 of his 34 shots using his non-dominant hand. This unforgettable display further solidified Bird's reputation as a master of mind games. In 1987, the Celtics made their last finals appearance of Bird's career, fighting through difficult series against the Milwaukee Bucks and Detroit Pistons. The Celtics fell short in 1988, losing to the Detroit Pistons in six games in the Eastern Conference Finals, as the Pistons made up from the heartbreak the previous season. Throughout the 1980s, contests between the Celtics and the Lakers both during the regular season and in the finals, attracted enormous television audiences. The apparent contrast between the two players and their respective teams seemed scripted for television, as they were polar opposites in nearly every way conceivable. Despite the intensity of their rivalry, Bird and Johnson became friends off the court. His rivalry with Magic Johnson captivated audiences around the world, defining an era of basketball and elevating the sport to new heights. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson are known to be one of the greatest rivalries in sports. Their rivalry began in college when Larry Bird and Indiana State lost to Magic Johnson and Michigan State in the NNCAA championship game. Their rival Yeah, you would never see another rival like that ever again. Magic and Bird, you will never see nothing like that ever again. Rivalry continued in the revived Celtics-Lakers rivalry in the NBA. Either the Celtics, led by Bird, or the Lakers, led by Magic, were present in every NBA final series in the 80s, with Bird and Magic meeting three times. Magic got the upper hand against Bird, beating him in 1985 and 1987 while Bird beat Magic in 1984. Journalists speculated that Bird and Magic represented different contrasts, such as clashes between Celtics and Lakers, between East and West, and between Blacks and Whites. 
But, as one journalist would say, they looked different, perhaps. But take a chainsaw to their souls, and they were fraternal, if not identical, friends. Watching Bird play was like watching Magic play, as they both shared this talent that the league had never seen before. They each had charisma, deaf shooting touch, extraordinary passing skills, and team-oriented mindset that ignited their team and the crowd. Bird and Magic's presence on the court was only a small part of their contribution to basketball, as their rivalry changed the landscape of the NBA, transforming it from a struggling, barely profitable league into a highly visible financial and marketing dream for teams and players alike. Larry Bird's legacy in basketball is etched in stone, voted onto the NBA's 50th anniversary all-time team in 1996, and inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 1998. Bird's impact on the game is undeniable. He played both the small forward and power forward positions, showcasing versatility matched by few. Universally recognized as one of the greatest basketball players and shooters of all time, Bird's prowess was unmatched. Bird's accolades speak volumes. He was selected to 12 NBA All-Star teams and won three NBA championships with the Celtics, in 1981, 1984, and 1986. Bird's dominance extended beyond team success. He won two NBA Finals MVP awards and clinched three consecutive regular season MVP awards, a feat shared only with Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Bird's ability to perform under pressure earned him a reputation as one of the foremost clutch performers in NBA history. Statistically, Bird's brilliance shines through he boasted career averages of 24.3 points per game on a 496 field goal percentage, showcasing his scoring prowess. Bird's accuracy extended to his free throw, shooting, where he boasted an impressive 886 percentage, and his three-point shooting, where he maintained a 376 percentage. His basketball IQ and court vision were evident in his career, averages of 10 puzzle rebounds per game and 6.3 assists. Bird's precision was unparalleled. He was the first player in NBA history to achieve a shooting percentage of 50% or better on field goals, 40% or better on three-pointers, and 90% or better on free throws in a single NBA season, achieving this feat twice. Bird's impact transcended statistics. Known for his trash-talking prowess, Bird's mental game was as strong as his physical one. His ability to predict his moves on the court and back them up struck fear into opponents. Even legends like Magic Johnson acknowledged Bird's unparalleled talent, conceding that there will never be another Larry Bird. Larry Bird's influence on basketball is immeasurable. From his humble beginnings to his storied career and beyond, Bird's name is synonymous with greatness. His tenacity, skill, and unwavering determination elevated him to legendary status. Larry Bird wasn't just good, he was exceptional. And for those who faced him on the court, he was nothing short of terrifying. All right, that's our first guest video, y'all. This wraps up this video. But anyway, appreciate all the love and support. Uh, Larry Bird is a beast. Larry Bird is a beast, and I don't understand why people don't give him credit. But anyway, uh, another question I wanted to ask y'all: What? How many championships do y'all think Larry would win if he was with uh, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Rondo? I don't know. I think they would win a lot. If that was possible, like if that happened. Anyway, subscribe if you're new, hit that like button, turn on that bell. On to the next video. Appreciate y'all so much. I'm out of here. Love y'all so much. Peace.